service here. That's a during World War II. Okay. I hope I get edged. It's been a long time ago. But I know Braid don't work on naughty now, so I We'll just make up stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Braid don't work very good. <laughs> hey, ever uh, what I went ahead and did is I printed off some pictures of the old fire truck. Yeah. And uh, maybe those will help jog some memories, but there's a picture of it during the war. Okay. And this is a picture yeah, of what yeah. it looks like today. Well, we had... Uh, we were... Well, as a gutter, first of all, trained as a gutter. And I see the good Lord had his hand on my shoulder. <laughs> Just before... We shipped out. I got sick, was in a hospital for a week or ten days. The next thing you know, I was here for I don't know, two or three months in the fire department. Then they shipped me to Alaska. And we threw supplies out to Lucia Islands and stuff. Anyhow, but while I was here in the fire department, they put me here, get rid of me, I guess, something. But lucky, I never had to, had to go to a fire. We never had any fire, but we trained all the time. And we took turns driving. In fact, I got my driver's license here. He said, can you drive? drive? So I said, oh yeah, I can drive. I was only 18. I drove a car. I got in there and started out of drive. I took the ladders off of the back of the truck. Turned too sharp. Then I couldn't shift because the double clutch, I don't know if you know what a double clutch is or not. How many of you young folks know what a double clutch is? One of you does, a couple of you do, that's some. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I had a double clutch, I couldn't do that, so they put me in a big old six by six truck, very big steering wheel and wooden steering wheel. Put me back over here, somewhere in the hills, up and down, I had to learn the shift. And that's when I got my first license, it's right there. I still got it. And, uh, but anyway, we learned that the first guy, he took a turn to learn to drive. And being a uh, hose man, he had to have somebody be a hose man. He jumped off the back of the truck and wrapped around the fire hydrant. And they tell you, well, we're going to do with this fire hydrant. They slowed down and he jumped off. Just I jumped off, he took off on me. <laughs> And uh, lucky I do have a let go of the hose, but I went sliding down the street. And uh, but then we had a big thing, looked like a tank. They called it tweet. What did they call it? Tweet machine. We had a long boom on it. It looked like a regular tank. In fact, I think it was an old tank. We had a long boom with a big saw on the end that went around. And uh, it wouldn't, wouldn't uh, have, we saw into the planes crashes, and we had to saw into it with this big long beam. Uh, how to saw it, it wouldn't uh, give any sparks out of it. And we had to cut it, learn how to cut it. They had big set planes on fire, old planes, and we had to work in that. And, uh, but uh, as far as, any farms on the base, as long as I was here, although we never had any far as I know. But we did practice for crash landings and stuff. We went out. We were back up the regular crash crew. And, uh, but uh, this truck here, I could never that. And we were on 24 hours at all, 24 hours. And, uh, but, and well, I went to you here at the base. I was here. About a year in '44, and this base here started out with B-17s. Then they changed the B-24s, and B-24 was a slow, low-flying plane. And they, where I was at, with the ball underneath, they, we called it Sperry ball. I don't know what they call it now. It was a round ball. It had a piece of plexiglass about that big, as all you could see out, and you had to. Scooped down in it, and I was a small span, I weighed about 130 pounds. You get down inside of it, 
And then you had to reach back, get the door, and pull it up and hook it. And you had a bill across your shirt. That's what you had to lean back on. And I was here one time, the door came open. And they had all he had was a belt across his shoulder to hold him in. <clears throat> and uh, but anyhow, you get down in there, the first time I went, well, I was in Florida, I took my train in on, on, I got in it, and I didn't know the first thing about what was down, there was two handles up here. You had your triggers on the end for 50 caliber machine guns. In your pedals, you had a Z, sideways Z. You push your pedals down, the regular that, you hit the wing tips of the airplane coming at you, you keep the fire on the end. And, uh, and up here with the two hands, they were regulate the ball any way you want to. But the first time I got down in there with this, this little thing in the hat that you could see out of, I got in it and I said, in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, I says, I don't, I don't see, we had a big cross. I said, I don't see anything down there to shoot at. They said, well, shoot the water, make a splash, and shoot the splash. Well, I was shooting out of the back of the airplane. I had no idea. You get out in the world of the air. Later, they, they put a compass all over the front of the plane, but, but I didn't know where I was shooting at. <laughs> and, uh, but anyhow, we, I think we took about a three months training when the B 17 to there. We came here. And, well, lucky we did get a lot of trouble. But the way they used to go out, the bombardiers, and when I wanted to me down the ball, I was a cavern man. In the back, they had a big door you could open. Then we had a big piece of metal, great big, thin over that hole, the great big hole in the middle, we had a big cavern. We were supposed to take pictures that they dropped balls. In. Well, the bomber deer, they were going out and uh, herd sheep out there, they drop it down the middle of the sheep. They were flower bags, they were worth the order. <laughs> and they were dropped. And the beer that caught, they were called court marshals. And, uh, but on the whole, uh, we, I really, well, I tell you what, well, you kids are, get your off from Casper, aren't they? Yes, all these kids are great. When I was here in Casper, with this, I want to tell you, this was the best town. I was all over the world, and there, and there was no better town than this town here. Everybody treated you like a son. Well, most everybody had sons in the service. So they treated it. I had places I could stay overnight, and uh, and I, in fact, I married a girl from Casper in 1946, and we were married for 67 years. She passed away last year, and and, it, and I came back every 1950 and stayed they here. Casper already went out to Beverly Street, 12th Street, Second Street was Beverly Street. Now, oh, they had a little pass, but I mean. That was in town. And, uh, but you should be, I don't know what else to say, but it's, this it was a great town. And you, boy, you better appreciate it. Because if you go back to some of the places I went to, especially down, well, I don't know if anybody from the south here or not, but when I was in Mississippi and places far, they treated you like dogs. In fact, they had signs that service to the dogs not allowed. And, uh, but I, most of my tour was all through the South. Then I, I was in Utah and Great Falls and in Canada. But these fire trucks, we had to wash them every day or, or do something positive to just keep us busy. So we were on 24 hours, all 24 hours. And we lived, well, the fire station was right, well, as you come in, out here on the right hand side, that's where the, all the lack barracks were. It was, our fire station was right over, I think on the street out here, over Main Street. Then there was a the hospital and the engineers out there. And uh, right across the fire station, that's where the colonel or, or the guy, that, the base uh, commander lived there. He always, they had, the one I had was there, he had two little kids. And I think they spent the time in the fire station. Yeah. And, uh, but we, but I see these pictures, boy, I know them. Back that the fire station we were in, I think. Anyhow, they had also had a staff car 
for your uh, Dr. Hegler was a lay surgeon. And, and the guy that had the first hamburger stand here in town, he was the chauffeur for Dr. Uh, Hegler, or Dr. Hegler. And they kept their car in, in the fire station with us. What was his name now? But he had it on 2nd Street. Oh, we had two or three blocks to pass Elk Street grocery store. Because the guy at Elk Street grocery store, he was owned that hamburger stand. Then they moved in town here with the hamburger. Rex, Rex, uh, hamburger stand is what they call it. Rex is in and out. But uh, it's, oh no, it's really tough to like, come out here. I, mean, I have pictures. I mean, I don't know if they're out here now or not, but there was pictures of the airplanes and crews and everything else. So, but, uh, this is quite a place out here. Well, actually, they built it here in Casper because of the weather. They, we had all kind of weather here, wind and rain and anything else. Uh, these runways are some of the biggest uh, runways around anywhere where they land big. In fact, they had the bases left, and they still do. They used to bring all the uh, air base or uh, uh, commercial airplanes in here and land. And then, too, the baby was in here for a while. Landing and taking off right away, and uh, but this is quite a quite a and I see coming in all these buildings over here. Oh, they were barracks. They were our barracks. All we slept in. And there was about well, what scared me more than anything else when I was here. We used to take an eight-hour trip from here to uh, Texas or the. Amarillo, I think it was the back, was an eight hour trip. Oh. And they would come over into South Dakota, and we made a 45 degree turn, come straight into here. So one week, in our barracks, we had 36 men, the double beds were, and about half of them were killed. We had airplanes, one on here on Castro Mountain, one behind the Dickey Club, or out here, and I don't know what it was, but they blamed the ground crew and they grounded him because they, well, I'll tell you, they didn't have a chance because one crew land, the other crew get up and gas it off and take right off. And why well, yeah, on this camera deal, they made me a cameraman. This stuff was like a tin or I don't know, real thin metal. We laid it on and had a camera. I took this big camera out and turned around. The wind blew that thing up in the air, and lucky I didn't go out behind it. <laughs> but anyway, I was fortunate enough not to. And but well, you know, it was I had good times, but I was only 18 years old. Really. To be 18 years old, 19 is the best part of your life. And but like I say, oh, two, I said the good Lord has had me sort of baby sick. Uh, I was here, my crew left, and I used to write to them, we'd write back and forth, and they'd talk about getting shot up a little bit. And all of a sudden, I never heard Dr. Drew. So I think they got shot down, so. Then, my, then I came back here as the war, and going, was going through all the furlough, and I picked them. Oh, well, she was my, my girlfriend, and we got married. Well, I'm originally from New, New Jersey, down around Atlantic City. Uh, they can say what they want to back there, but I'll take it here. <laughs> you ever get to back there? The, the beaches were nice days, but they're not now. But they used to be real nice, but you were soaking wet all the time. That humidity was so high. In them days, we didn't have showers. That'd get a bad tub all the time. And, but I hope none of you, well, I'll be very frank with you. I'm against all wars. I don't care what war it is or anything else. I, I think half these wars don't belong. We, we should never have them. But I see too much, and and too many people coming home with no legs, arms, and everything else. And I just, I just, well, I never told my wife for a long while. 
But when I made a stop in Dover, uh, Dover, 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 and they were unloading, then for overseas, I could see the first two or three caskets that didn't come off no legs. I, I left. I couldn't watch it. It, you just don't know how many, oh, where's that book at? Right here. I want to, uh, this is the trip I took to Washington to the Spectre. So I want to speak with you. You want to know how many people was killed. That was a trip. I, my brother was there. Older brother was there when they went up, and he was killed over there. Uh, okay, she's around. You can look at it. This was a the world. Well, it was a it's a memorial for all service. Yeah, is when you went in there, there's this big wall all the way around, and these things stick out. You look at them, they're from each state, is where the war veterans. But and before you went in there, there you started in. If I can find it, I'll it right here in the front. Show you how many men was killed in the world. Well, darn. I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what it was when I first went and looked at it. But finally they told me what it was. So there is you know, this great big among the walls is gold stars. All it was gold stars. Each one never represented a hundred men. Hmm. Yeah, I just couldn't believe it. That's in the World War II Memorial? Yeah, yeah. Kind of national, yeah. The National World War II Memorial is in Washington, D.C. Yeah. And see, right here, I'll show you this one. They're not real. That is a crazy war. Right. I, now, you stand here staring at they look so real. <laughs> I'll pass this around you can look at it. Get out of I thought I had the very first cage here. They didn't have any. Well, I don't know. I know I had it. What, let me know. What's the photograph of? Huh? What's this? I think fits with all these stars. I want to show you. Oh, let me go. I'll tell you. What, I'll go look for you, and you can keep talking to the okay. folks here. I'll go. I'll go through and try to find it for you. And these here. See these things here? Yes, sir. They were the navy. And where the navy memorial is, and they were all in a they had a little wall. You walk around, and all these ships and stuff, and you could hardly see them. And uh, but I when I took a picture of them, they really showed up. They were all carved in this, this on the sidewalk. I mean, that little, I guess they were, uh, I don't know what kind of, they were like a, uh, I can't think of stuff. Anyhow, they carved all, did all these, all these ships and stuff around in there. You know.
All right, well, Everett, these young folks are supposed to learn to ask questions as part of their project. Okay, so anything I can do, I'll try to help. We're going to let these young folks go, and everyone's supposed to ask a question for you to, as part of their project. When you met Margaret at the skating rink, how did you feel that day? Did I bet what? Or what? I'm telling you, I'm a little hard to hear because I'm that ball with all these people covered in shingle. I ripped my ears and they can't fix them for me. But go ahead. How did you feel when you, when you met Margaret at the skating rink in North Casper? How did I mean? Well, I was, roller skating was my thing. I roller skated back, we had a big roller rink. And my roller skates went with me. And they had this over there. And I didn't care. Uh, I would never get really close to anybody because I was scared I was going to get my head blown off or something. And I didn't. And the bus used to, the different kind of buses then took us out. Then we had to uh, walk back. There would always be a bunch of sisters then. And, and girls, and we'd always walk one of them home, maybe, or go back to, in downtown, uh, where the uh, Wyoming Business Center is, you know where that's at? There yes. on 2nd Street, or a little street cut across there. That used to be an ice cream store. They made ice cream stuff in there. So we used to go out there and have ice cream, or going down on Center Street to the restaurant, we had the sandwich. Then we walk these girls home and not. It's a long story. And I dated Margaret uh, a whole couple of times, went to her house, and USO had a big picnic, I took her. Anyhow, when I went up to Alaska, I, uh, I fact, forgot them all. And one day I come up with this name and address, and I thought, I wonder who that is. And, uh, and she wrote back a couple of times, and she sent me her picture. And I knew that day on, we wrote every day. And she sent me this picture right here. And you all want to see it. Can you see it? Here? You got to press that to see it there. Oh, no, I don't need it. That's the picture that did it, huh? Yes, that when we, uh, you just pass around and just push that button and it go. And that's what did it. We were every day. And when I come back, I was up there two years. I came back, I went to my New Jersey, got there one night, and got on the train, come back out here. On my birthday, December 19th, I got here on the 18th. And on the 19th, we were on a plane going to her. Uh, train going back to New Jersey and uh, meet my folks. Yeah, I tell you, it was a trip. Got in Chicago. she never been out of Wyoming. And uh, she was scared to death. She's only 18 then. And uh, we got in Chicago. It was so crowded. The service was just the after the war. I tried to get home. And they kept driving trains and driving trains. And Finally, we got on one, sometime late in the afternoon, and it sidetracked for every train coming and going. And uh, anyhow, when it got cold at night, dark, it was all service lit on the train. It was just like a refrigerator part in there. All this ice around the top. Lucky I had a blanket in my duffel bag, and we covered up in that. Then the next day, the sun came out. And they were all that stuff, sutton stuff. Streets down inside her face, we look like something else. All of us, she had long dark. Anyhow, we finally got to filled up in the evening. Then I take a bus out of my hometown. And I got on a cab and took her up to my folks' house. They have a nice big hole. He's a, he a little business guy that did. Anyhow, she was kind of scared to go and I uh, got in there, my dad, a little guy, he kind of looked up, he looked, this is the radio, he looked up, he dropped his head out, oh God. Anyhow, she would have sat down and right out of here, hope you don't want to run out of here, he needs to get warm. My sister took her upstairs to get a bath, 
She took a bad address and she come down the stairs to my dad, popped his eyes up. Hey, my mom fell in love with her. I knew I had a wife. <laughs> and they thought, well, everybody told me she was a person who could draw everybody to her. She never had an enemy in the world. And today, everybody tells me, I live in a senior building, and she passed away here last April, a year ago, April, the age of 67 years. And they all talk about her because she was, she had lupus for about six years. And, but anyway, that's how I met Margaret, so. Wonderful. You, how oh. Now, you girls are mostly 13. Any, any 14 year? One 14 year old girl? Well, can you imagine being married four or five years from now? That's pretty, pretty well, young to be married. Well, I used to go roller skating. Rich Gallows owned the, the roller skating ring. And he made me uh, what they call a floor manager because I spent most of my time there. And if people fall down, I still pick them up and all that. Well, uh, she fall down and I had her butt off. She uh, she said, I didn't, she blamed me. She said, yeah, I was so dirty, but you always had to pat my butt. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, you know, I was always in love with you. I said, you were too damn far to lag her. stuck up. I didn't know that, but anyway, that's what she told me. But, uh, but you know, there's what I know to say, the good Lord gave me a beautiful wife, and I have three children. And uh, one of them's here to visit my daughter, Richard Cashner, and her husband is here, and the daughter of Sandra, an attorney here in town, Hardens. And uh, then I got a son in South Bluff, that my oldest son passed away two years ago with a uh, uh, pulling disease, or cancer. But this, I want to tell you, boy, you want to take this in. And you want to stay here in Casper, boy. Did you get around and see what I see in the country? I, and now Casper's not like it used to be either. One thing, when I was here, everybody spoke to everybody. You walk down the street, you speak or they speak and nod at you, and they were courtesy. They're not like they do today, and cars cut you off or anything else. Well, there wasn't very many cars here either when I was here, but it was. And, Downtown, there used to be a, for years and years, in the old S building, was Harry Yes's grocery store, or big store, and then he was in, out of Band of Barrel, sat down in front. Band of Barrel, he used to call it. The Castro was a beautiful city, and we had three big hotels downtown, and we don't have, we didn't have the restaurants. We have to, I don't know how any of them mix out, but I guess they do. But anyway, this is a great town. And this town made me enjoy the service. Because when I was in, like I say, down south in Mississippi places, they didn't have no use for us. And, you know, any, anybody else have anything? Matt, go ahead. Oh, I better keep your mouth shut. Look what they ask me. <laughs> Um, well, my question was, um, did you have a reason to become a firefighter? Yeah, a did you have a reason to become the firefighter? Well, you know, I always wanted to be a firefighter. Uh, when I got out of the service, I stayed back in New Jersey for three years. And I was on a volunteer fire department there. And when I was a kid, our school was right alongside the fire station, the first and second grade or so. And when that, we had a big bell and a whistle. When that went off, the teacher couldn't keep me in a seat. I had to go to the window and watch it. And I always wanted to be a firefighter. So, I mean, I guess, I don't know if I asked to be one of us here or what, but it, I enjoyed it. And, but we were, I'll tell you, we were smoke eaters. We weren't firemen. Now, today, they have to have good training and everything. All we know how to do is grab a hose and run in there and squirt. And you had to, well, I had a brother-in-law, he was on the fire department too, and he had to go up these stairs and open the door, and they come out at him, and he knocked him all the way down the stairs. Because we didn't know no different. Now you've got to go to college to learn your fire protection and stuff here. You got something to say? Yeah. What was your best memory when you were serving? By what? Your best memory of serving? Well, 
was your best memory while you were serving? Oh. I don't know. I think anything I did here in Casper, I just love Casper. It was just like home to me. Because everybody was so good to me. And I just I just enjoyed being here and I had my mind made up I was coming back. And if I married or not, I was coming back. You know? But when you go around the country, you see some of this stuff. Well, I see it now. I imagine they're all cleaned up and stuff. But it wasn't. It wasn't very nice, I'll tell you. But here in Casper, it was. And I just all I can remember things that we did. I picnics and stuff they gave us. And and, and Mr. O, Mr. Dallas had the roller rink. He lived down on Squaw Creek Road. He had a bank farm. And they used to invite us, a couple of us guys out there. And one day, she's making these pickles. And they had these big, yard, big jugs or something. They put them in, and there was soup, and put them in. Up. Well, I ate them until I was about sick. <clears throat> Anyhow, they had some horses out there that were on the ranch. And, oh, I just could after and saddle one of them up and get on them. Well, I got them, I'd look at them, get killed. It took off. I couldn't stop eating two rocks and everywhere else. Uh, but I, I enjoyed just being here, and, and that always stuck in my mind out there. And he had a bank farm out there, and uh, but it, the people were so good. The only thing, one, one thing scared me though. I went back to New Jersey on a, I think it's before I went to just before I went to Alaska on a furlough, and I came back. And I stopped here, and I went out to this house where I usually go at night time. They told me out of bed. It was dark, and and I didn't know somebody in my bed where I had, and I see this room, the bed there. I got into it, and all of a sudden I realized there was another woman laying in there. So I went out and sat in a chair. I thought, oh, good thing she didn't see me. She about killed me or something. But I mean, a lot of things happened. We had an old car. One of the fellows did a low car. Every time we had to lay on the fender, and one guest down the carburetor to get us back out to the base. <laughs> but yeah, it was just a lot of funny little things. And, but uh, I guess that's it. Okay. How old were you when you, when you became a firefighter? Well, I'll see. I was about 19, I think. Because I went in in 43, and this is 40, but I was 19 then, so, because I spent time I was four years, and I was, I got out December the 31st, 46, and I just turned 22 when I got to my birthday, it's just before Christmas, so, but, uh, oh, I had a lot of nice space, I shouldn't say I didn't, like them all and now, after I got buried, we were in England Field, Florida. And uh, that was the answer to the war. They didn't know what to do with us. So they just shipped us anywhere to de get rid of us for a while. And you we got out by numbers. And uh, there uh, points, what a, how many if you ever see so much. And, and uh, went down there and we just loafed around down there about, and my wife, she put down with me and we, and we, we lived in a big dormitory, and we were all friends, and we used to have picnics and everything like that. We just, finally they said, we want to get rid of you. So, out we went, so. But we had a lot of fun down there. And, uh, oh, it must have been 15 of us always had a picnic or going fishing. Now, that close to Fort Walden, Florida, and there was beautiful, beautiful beach. The water was just as blue as you could see. And there was one little shop on the beach. It had a hot dog on the stick. He there in the, there in the winter, he went back to Atlantic City in the summertime on the boardwalk. I asked him, I said, how do you make this stuff? And they put on the outside of it. So I want to tell you, he said, I'm getting the patent on it. And he's the man that made all, all these uh, Hot dog shops like the one they had in Casper, that was his. 
And, uh, but today, I see pictures, and it is crowded, the great big recreation center down there, big hotels, everything. There was nothing. And there was, well, see, there was four couple. We was in his old car, and we couldn't hardly get it to run. Here, my wife is three months pregnant, and <laughs> we just scared to death. We need to go let us back in on the base. But outside of that, I, I don't know much of anything. <coughs> next, go ahead, next thing. Um, how old were you when the war was over? You what? Ah. How, how old were you when the war was over? I uh, see. <coughs> I was 21. You know, I oh, I gripe a lot. But yet I had good times when I was in the service. But I was always bad because I went through depression back in the 35s and we didn't have anything. We ate anything, we never threw anything away. Uh, I worked for my dad, he owned a printing business. After school when I was a kid, and I get 15 cents a week. 10 cents to go to movies, 5 cents to buy a bag of candy. And he had he had a business, and we had a good business, and he had he had money, nothing in the real great, but he had money. And then the banks were insured. They went under, he got 10 cents on the dollar. About broke him. And and I could never could figure it out for a long while until I oh, almost I was in the service. We he made sure we always had a nice home, nice furniture and stuff, clothes. And I couldn't figure out how, how he could afford it. Well, I come to find out, all these places owed him money. So he had the bargain and he'd take furniture and stuff. I get furniture from what they owed him. That's how we lived. And and you never threw nothing away. Everything I we we ate anything we could find. Then, just about when the war was over, I was a senior in high school. And while well, my father lost all his health, he worked day and night practically. And uh, I was a senior in high school, and I took printing in high school. Well, the high school there was a four-year school, so, a freshman, sophomore, and senior. And, uh, but I worked at that print shop most of the time. I did all the work for school and everything. And then uh, last year as a senior, all of our men teachers were gone. We just had teachers. We had one teacher for bookkeeping. She didn't know more about bookkeeping than I did. She run down to the hall and walked around the bookkeeping teachers. She tried to explain the lesson. So anyway, when Christmas did, um, I said, told my dad, I said, well, I'm going to quit school. And uh, I have not tour group, so you have to take charge. We are, we are in command. I said, I'll quit school and go to work for you. So I went to work for him January 1st. March, March the 1st, I got a notice. Uncle Sam got so, I, I never graduated, I, I worked for the Trivia here for 30 years as a treasurer. We worked, and when I was working for the Trivia, it was all hot metal. Everything was all made, the hot metal. Now today, when they said they were going to go to the computers, I retired. I had 29 years in. I retired and went to Hilltop Bank for nine years. But I don't know, I, I enjoy, I try to enjoy every world of that because the minute I had any time off, I thought I'd enjoy it because I never knew if I was ever going to come back home again or not. And I just enjoyed it, you know. Although, when I was in Mississippi, I got the first Christmas, I think, or Mother's Day, somehow, that I got so homesick, I wanted to go home, and we were a post family. And I just wanted to go home so bad. And I said, well, I'm going to go get drunk. I never had a drink in the life. I went down to PX, bought a sandwich and two bottles of beer. I took about two sips. I thought, well, how can anybody drink this stuff? I got out and left. So that's, but anyway, I guess in the service, I made self, I enjoyed what I, I tried to enjoy everything I did. So and I learned a lot. Because a lot of people, a lot older I was, had more experience than I did. So I just try to listen to them and see what's going on. Excellent. So we've got about 10.
ten more questions to go. Ooh, I better let him go, Larry. Um, what was your favorite pastime when you were here? Roller skating. I did all of that. I roller skated all the time. When I was a kid, I used to be able to dance all and everything, but I wouldn't even think about it now. Yeah, and the, this place here is, uh, used to be, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, they used to have square dancing in here all the time, square and I think this is the building, I'm sure it is, and they painted the walls with all the pictures they did in here, uh, well, they did that in the building service, each van, or he, well, they had a lot of different artists move in, and they all took different things, painted, but, Roller skate was my, I, that's what I did all the time. Um, what, what else did you do besides roller skating for free time? What else did you do besides roller skating for free time? You've mentioned picnics and roller skating. What else did folks do for fun? I don't know. <laughs> This is whatever came up. Oh, well, we played softball and baseball. We had team. Now, when I went out of Alaska, we used to have a midnight basketball game. Never knew that. Softball. We were on softball teams because it's it's sun at midnight. It's real bright up there. And our, well, we lived in a Quonset. I don't even know what Quonset was. The rally building, about that thick, and clamps all over. In the wintertime, It'd be so cold in the barracks, it'd be freezing. But we had blanks, the big, uh, uh, I forget what you call it. At nighttime, we covered them up because it, it was so cold in there and they had all the frost on them. But uh, in the summertime, it stayed light, a light all day and all night. And we had to put stuff on the windows so we could sleep. But I, we played softball, baseball, and stuff. And, and they had recreations for us that we could do. And, and this like here, USO, this is a wonderful USO downtown. Next to the courthouse, it burned down. It used to be there where the VFW was. That was a big USO in there. And you go in there and they really take care of you. And they had picnics every once in a while. They get the army, they bring the trucks in and take. I thought the other day I was trying to take where I was at. But it was out, went out to see why. It was Harry Estes Ranch. Because Harry Estes, he's on Plopper Street where the main ranch, but went clear across practically all the way uh, across CY on the other side where the boy now went off. They were all cleared up until in the late, the early 60s. That was all his ranch in there had cleared down almost Plopper Street. And then but anyhow, we go on his ranch and they cook for us and we have a good time. So, like I said, I try to enjoy it. Can you tell us a little bit about what a picnic was like in the 40s and 50s? Because I think it's different than our idea of a picnic today. No, they don't have them like they used to. No, can you tell us about what they used to be like? Well, I guess it's pretty what we had. They always, well, the Army always brought food out to us, hot dogs and stuff like that. And, and we had, uh, I guess they brought beer, after, but I didn't bring beer then or anything. They had pop and, I don't know, and they just mingled together and they had some music and and uh, we just had, I don't know, did we just mingled really everything and had fun and and enjoyed it a lot. And, and when I was in Alaska, they had a place about once a week, downtown in Fairbanks, where they had a big dance brought in the music and stuff. They had dances, the wax and everybody. He just had a nice time on a once a week in there. But everybody was like brothers and sisters for there. Took care of everybody and and I happened to be in the hospital on VJ Day or VD. Yeah, VD. Yeah, okay. The end of the war, I was in the hospital. I'm telling the glad I broke my foot. And because they had a, if you went in the barracks, you'd get into our quonset, they had a little 
I don't know what you call it, wicker feet on a little wooden board. But they were thick up out of I happened to be going to turn my ankle a little bit. I didn't think it hurt so bad, but a couple of days later I couldn't hardly walk. I broke a bone and it caught my foot. But anyhow, I was happy to be in the hospital when the DJ day was over. And uh, I'm glad I was, I guess. Because all the bars turned it over to everybody when they make their own drinks and there were more people they brought in that hospital or hurt and beat up. And, but anyway, that's, that's here and there. But, they, but everybody was so happy that that war was over with. So. Did you ever ice skate with the other firefighters? Did I ever ice skate? Well, I did when I was a little kid, a dumb kid. We didn't have too much on. We had a pond. Hank and Spawn, we'd go out there and we'd cut down a branch or a, something, make our own sticks, and we'd have a, I don't know what we used for a puck, but we'd go up and skate, used to ice skate and play hockey on that ice out there. Well, I used to, used to jump. But our ice skates, we had to put them on the foot, they had a key to lock them, clamp it to your foot. They didn't have shoe skates in. They were all just regular skating. You clamp it to the bottom of your soldiers, next thing you know, your soul will be coming off. <laughs> How did you feel when you transferred to the crash house? How did you feel when you transferred to the crash house? As to what? How did you feel when you were transferred into the crash house? The firefighting oh. team here. Oh, I, I kind of enjoyed it. I, I thought of this, the... Uh, uh, something different, and in a way, I'd be very frank with you. I was really glad uh, I wasn't going to go over season five because I knew where we were going. Deep down, but I still have a guilty, guilty conscience because I think they were all killed or something, and I wasn't with them. But we trained for a long while together. But I guess you got to look out for yourself. But I still think about a lot, and. and and when I see a lot of these fellas coming home from Vietnam and all them, no legs, no arms, and I just, and they, what I see them do over Delaware, where they brought all these men from overseas back, I just, I got chicken, I don't know, but it was, it was terrible. And I feel so, just like Veterans Day, I had so many people come and shake my hand, thank you, and there's a young fella here, I was in Walmart, and he came up, and I was talking to another man, and he shook my hand. He said, I just come home from Afghanistan. He had a he had a cane on him, and he's all bent over. I said, that what happened to you? He said, yeah. I said, I owe you a shake. I said, you guys are going to do it. I, that's, and all these men, uh, Korea and all them, they, they just, I just can't take war. I mean, I know maybe we're supposed to be there, I don't know, but I always think it's just for money and other things, so I don't know. But I'm against all of them. Um, I was wondering, like, when you first joined the Army, why did you decide to join the Air Force? Instead? Well, I'll tell you, that was a long story. I to New Jersey, they take you, they send you to Fort Dix. That was uh, where they first go to Fort Dix, and you sit there and go, really, the, they do a bunch of paperwork and all that. Then there was a big troop train. They put us on. I had no idea where we were going or what I was in. And also, we figured it out later that all these people that's supposed to be <coughs> guarding and stuff, they had Air Force patches on us. So I said, oh, we're going to the Air Force. We went to Greensboro, North Carolina, which that was a pretty good town, but I never really got into town there because that was the basic training. We stayed right there. Took all of her uh, tea and stuff like that. And in fact, I enjoyed that. They made us run like cross country. When I was in high school, I was a cross country runner. And boy, I enjoyed that running every day. But uh, we were there about, well, when I got there, there was a big